Take a glass of juice and swirl it clockwise like this. And the liquid inside also moves in the clockwise direction. Seems pretty obvious, right? But now let's say you just made a pancake and you start swirling the pan in the same clockwise direction. But the pancake rotates in the opposite direction. Believe it or not, this is called pancake rotation. And it's a phenomenon that scientists are using to help them understand everything from hurricanes to bacterial swarms. So why does juice move with the container, but a pancake moves in the opposite direction? Well, there are different materials in this case, but can we get clockwise and counterclockwise rotation to happen with the same material? So I have a bunch of beads here in this Petri dish. I'm also gonna put two black ones in here so you can make out which way they're rotating. I have the beads on this rotating platform. This is actually a shaker for my resin printer, but it's perfect because it rotates it in the clockwise direction like this. So you can see it rotates it like this. So let's watch what happens when I rotate these beads here. So you can see the black balls are rotating in the same direction as the swirling dish. Now let's add more beads. So now they're going in the opposite direction. So the black beads are going counterclockwise now. Same object with the same rotation, but now totally different behavior. Now this might look like a simple physics trick, but it's actually a deep physics problem involving friction, granular materials, and even the transition between solid and liquid states. So what is happening here? This is actually part of a physics problem that scientists have been studying for decades. Let's start by looking at a single ball. When I make a swirling motion, there are two types of motion that this can cause with the ball. The first motion is just linear momentum transfer. The sides of the dish knock the ball. This causes the ball to move in the same direction as the swirling dish. But there's also a different motion happening, especially when there's more friction. Since the ball is sitting on the dish, if you move the dish below it, the ball starts to roll. This rolling is in the opposite direction of the moving dish. So if I just take one ball that's only rolling and not getting knocked by the sides, it will rotate in the opposite direction of the swirl. So now we can start to see that we have two competing movements. When the ball has low friction and only collides with the sides, the bulk direction is with the swirl. But if there's a lot of friction, the ball moves in the opposite direction of the swirl. When we have relatively few balls, there isn't a lot of friction with the sides or each other. But the more balls we add, the more friction they have with each other and the side of the container. This causes them to roll more in the opposite direction. So the friction rolling in the opposite direction is greater than the knocking motion in the same direction. It's fascinating how friction changes everything. Just like these beads reverse direction when friction increases, our brains work differently when learning a language. The traditional way memorizing vocabulary lists and grammar rules creates too much mental friction, making progress feel like swimming upstream. That's why I want to tell you about our sponsor today, AirLearn. Learning a new language has never been easier thanks to AirLearn, a new language learning app with a 4.7 star rating and a spot in the top 10 charts in over 50 countries. AirLearn makes learning fun, effective, and accessible. And you can get started with five free daily lessons covering Spanish, French, German, Japanese, Korean, and Chinese, among others. AirLearn's teaching slides simplify vocabulary and grammar with easy to follow images and pronunciation examples so that you don't sound like a lost tourist. Ensure what you learn actually sticks while the words tab helps you master new vocabulary without the dreaded flashcard fatigue. Stay motivated with weekly leagues, track your progress, and enjoy a completely ad-free experience. With paid users in over 125 plus countries, AirLearn is already loved and trusted worldwide. If you want to try AirLearn, you can download it today using the link in the description and start learning for free. Now let's get back to our experiment. What's neat about this is that it's a great analog of phase transition. 
When we have relatively few particles, they act like a liquid, slipping past each other without interacting much. But then a phase transition happens at some point, when you keep adding balls. We reach a point where the particles interact so much that they behave like a solid, and the whole thing rotates in a bulk in the opposite direction, just like a pancake. So if friction is causing this, then we should be able to see that when we take away friction, the effect goes away. So let's get to a point where the balls are moving in the opposite direction, meaning rolling friction is dominating here. But now I'm going to squirt some WD-40 to reduce the friction between the balls, so they can't grip as easily and make each other roll. Whoa, it actually stopped the rotation, that's so cool! So if we reduce the friction, it stops the rotation in the opposite direction. Researchers actually simulated this and they found the same thing, when friction is removed and there's no reverse motion. This phenomenon of changing direction is an emergent behavior of swirling particles. Once you reach a critical density and you get bulk movement in the opposite direction of the swirling motion. This even happens in hurricanes and other vortices. In a developing hurricane, warm air rises and spirals inward toward the center. But within that hurricane, you have smaller vortices. You can sometimes get rotations that move in the opposite direction of the larger hurricane rotation. Also, a similar effect even happens in bacterial swarms. So the next time you swirl juice or even a pancake in a pan, you're witnessing the same physics that shapes storms and even life itself. And if you want to try AirLearn, you can download it today using the link in the description and start learning for free. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab and we'll see you next time.